the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So this is the Ember Saturday in the week of Pentecost. This is very different. You have the five readings, the one epistle, and the gospel. And in former times, it was very frequent that there would be ordinations of all the minor orders, the deacons and priests on this day, which would be done between all these readings. So it would be a very long ceremony. And so this time is so precious. This time is so pleasing to God. This time is, it matches the joy of the spring because our Lord had been crucified 50 days ago, uh, 50 days from Pentecost. He rose from the dead three days later. He ascended into heaven on, on Ascension Thursday, the 40 days after. And then 50 days after his crucifixion and death on the cross is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, Pentecost. 50 days after Moses slaughtered the lamb by the command of God, kill the lamb and eat all of the flesh, cook it and eat it, and eat with a staff in your hand ready to travel. And there's a whole many meaning, meanings for all this. This all points to Christ. But 50 days after Moses killed the lamb and crossed the Red Sea, he received on Mount Sinai the law of the commandments from God with fire and thunder and earthquakes. Fifty days after the real lamb was crucified on the cross, the fathers of the, of the new law, the first pope and the bishops of the Catholic Church, surrounding the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our church, the Holy Ghost poured down, descended on them in, in tongues of flames of fire, first on the Virgin Mary, then all the other apostles. And on this was not written on stone, as St. John Chrysostom says, this law of God, this law of love and charity is not written on stone, but in this Pentecost, which is far more perfect than the Pentecost on Mount Sinai, giving stone tablets with the law written on stone to Moses, now the Holy Ghost writes this law in our hearts. So the Holy Ghost is really poured out into your soul, present there by sanctifying grace with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. The three persons of the one God dwell in our soul by participation. Participation. That's the key word used by St. Thomas Aquinas to explain as humanly we can, but these great mysteries of God, that the fire of the Holy Ghost is really written in the hearts. So our Lord, his sacred heart, that fire of his sacred heart, that he sent from heaven, because remember Christ ascended with his burning heart, his wounds in his hands and feet, his sacred face, his whole body rose to heaven. So he and the Father sent the burning of the Holy Ghost into the soul with increasing grace in the Virgin Mary and in the apostles in giving them the sanctified grace and what was called the confirmation in grace. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches this. What does this mean? That the apostles were confirmed in grace, that they would never commit mortal sin for the day they died and they would be martyred all of them, except St. John, but he would be almost martyred because he should have been boiled and fried. So the Holy Ghost is poured into us when we're baptized. As long as we live in the state of grace, the Holy Ghost burns in us. And should a soul have the terrible misfortune to lose the state of grace by mortal sin, it can be recovered, as the Council of Trent teaches, by a sincere repentant act of contrition. And that's why we're always taught by our parents, by nuns, by priests, by brothers, by catechisms, 
always end the day with an act of contrition. There's a danger of death, danger of death, make an act of contrition. Soldiers going to war, um, firefighters facing a huge danger, make an act of contrition. And God could wipe away all sin and infuse the state of grace if one is not in the state of grace. And then of course, it's the beauty of the great sacrament of confession, which is really the outpouring of the love of the Sacred Heart, who, who washes the soul from the stains of sin makes that soul whiter than snow, brighter than the sun. And when we go to confession, and we, and we have no mortal sins to confess, but venial sins and imperfections, that's good to do, and renew our sorrow from past sins. But remember, the Holy Ghost pours out through the Sacred Heart of Jesus an increase, an increase of sanctifying grace. So this really is a transformation in the soul. It really transforms your being. And as all retreat masters say on retreats, especially when you get uh, people who have never gone to confession in years, in the, after the confessions, you can see the change of the face on the people. The change of the face, because sanctified grace really transforms, it touches the very being of the soul. It's a quality to be, metaphysically precise, it's an accidental quality of the soul, but it touches on the very being of your whole person, of your, of your soul, and body too. So it affects that. So we want to make sure, we, we strive to live always in the state of grace, do everything in the state of grace out of love for God. Now, uh, let me go through briefly the sequence of this Mass, applying it to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Holy Ghost. It says, Come, Holy Ghost, and pour into us the light, the radiance of your heavenly light. What is this heavenly light? It is the participation in the state of grace. Come, O Father of the poor. Father of the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And how do we become poor in spirit? Well, we become like that little baby towards God. We cry to our Heavenly Mother. We cry to our Heavenly Father, help me. Without your help, I'm going to fall. I'm going to end up in hell. I'm not going to make it. That's reality. And the saints trembled, and they realized this truth. It's pride that God rejects and, and turns away from. But when we approach God like children and even infants, begging God's help and sustenance in the state of grace, help to be growing virtue, help to just keep the faith in this age of apostasy, it's frightening how easy it is to fall. Hey, angels have fallen from heaven, bishops, popes, nuns, monks, priests, who are we? So, come, Father of the poor. God loves the poor, and the poor firstly in spirit. And you had saints who were, who were materially rich. St. John, St. Uh, Charles Borromeo came from a wealthy family, so did many other saints. Many of them were rich, like St. Elizabeth of Hungary and many queens and kings. But they're, they're, they were poor in spirit. That's what pleased God. They were poor in spirit, knowing that I'm nothing, Lord, and without your grace I can do nothing, but with your grace I can do all things. That's why you must be fearless when it comes to professing the faith. And we have to be ready to, to shed our blood for the faith, the love of Christ crucified. And little girls, <laughs> little girls, we could go all day on this one, uh, beautiful little girls, Teenage girls, young ladies, mothers, even with children, wet to death, wet to death, beheadings, burnings, crucifixion for the love of Christ. So God will always give strength to those who call upon him. Never doubt that. But we have to be poor in spirit. Come, giver of good gifts. And the greatest gift from God is himself. 
He's going to give you his sacred heart, burning with love and Holy Communion. That's what you're going to swallow today, to catch your fire more, the fire of, in your soul, more aflame with the love of God. Come, O light of the heart. The light of the heart is the presence of the Blessed Trinity in the soul, the light of the faith, to profess this Holy Catholic faith. Consolator optime, O greatest, best consolation. And one of the signs of the state of grace, as St. Thomas Aquinas, and we can never be certain we are in the state of grace, but one of the signs of it is actually to enjoy God. You actually enjoy his speaking with him, his presence, you breathe in his friendship, and that's a good sign. And if we don't like God, we don't even like the things of God, we don't even want to pray, that's a very bad sign. So you want to pray for that grace. Lord, teach me to love you and love prayer and love to spend my time with you in contemplation and prayer. O oh, sweet guest of the soul. Who is the guest of the soul? God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is really the love of God. It's unbelievable because St. Thomas Aquinas says not even pagans dreamt of this. They didn't even dream that their pagan gods, which are devils, would ever become flesh, die for them, and dwell in them with their same spirit, their same fire, their same love. But the true God is this. And that's why we, we have to, if you're close to the Virgin Mary, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, she's the spouse of the Holy Ghost, especially in these days, keep her rosary, wear her scapula, love her like a mother, really love her. St. Philip Neri always insisted on this. Talk to Our Lady and just say her name powerfully. And when the priest is assisting the dying, it says in the Roman ritual, if they can't pray and they can't do anything and hardly breathe, get them to say the name of Jesus and Mary. So those names are on their lips when they die. But it's, those names are powerful. And remember the, the devils in hell and even the damned in hell cannot say the name of Jesus and Mary. They cannot say it. It just burns them because they're so filled with hate. So we want to love this name and say it reverently often. So come uh, as a guest of the soul, the Holy Trinity in our soul. And this is really the essence of prayer. This is what God wants with all of us. It's this, this closeness with the Blessed Trinity. Come, sweet refreshment, dulce refrigerium, the sweet refreshment. When it's hot, nothing is more refreshing than a cold drink and a, and a cool breeze or a nice uh, river that's cool to jump in. A sweet refreshment, and a refreshment for the heat of the battles against sin and the exhausting battle that we're going through now. We're going through a major war, and priests are getting tired. Bishops are getting tired, and they're talking about surrendering with modernist Rome. And surrendering and well as long as we get the mass that's all that matters no it's not it's not all just about the mass because the Greek Orthodox don't have the faith they don't recognize the primacy of Peter they're in a false religion but they have the true valid mass believe it or not believe it or not so it's not just the mass but it's the doctrine of the faith the the doctrines that are revealed by God that must be kept and handed down, and they cannot change. And St. Pius X condemned the whole idea that uh, dogmas can change and evolve. And that's the thinking of modernist Rome. That's why Archbishop of Feb said, you can't discuss with Cardinal Ratzinger and these popes. Because when I say tradition, they mean a living tradition that changes. When I say a mass of all time, they mean a mass that can adapt and change and become Lutheran. Their, 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 their definitions are way off because of modernism. It's so poisonous. Modernism, like termites, eats the wooden and even the concrete foundations. 
So that's why Archbishop of Thebes said there's just we can't even discuss with Rome. Because I'm talking AM, they're on FM. I'm talking Catholic tradition and St. Thomas philosophy and theology. They're talking Hans Kuhn, Hegel, Marx, and all uh, and uh, Den Lubach and these modernists. There's just no meeting of the minds. And that's why Archbishop of Thebes said no discussion until Rome comes back to tradition. And that hasn't changed. And the only ones left standing on that principle now are the handful of resistance priests that are still standing, who you must pray for also, lest we fall. And show me any bishop standing. Just show me. No one has contacted me yet. I've been saying this for a few months now. Show me one bishop holding in the line of Archbishop of Feb. Please call me, write me, email me, write a nasty letter, even if you want. Show me one bishop holding the same line of Archbishop of Feb, of all the traditional ones. Let me know. But pray that one of them at least will stand up like Archbishop of Feb. At least one. What else? This beautiful sequence. You are, O Holy Ghost, in labor you are rest. And Christ says that himself. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. And what is the biggest burden for most souls? The saints have said it themselves. It's ourselves. Myself. How many times many saints have said that? Father, the biggest problem is myself. Because of our sins, of our weakness, of our inclination to sin. So, um, rest for the soul. We find strength and rest in the heart of Jesus and Mary. And also in the heat, coolness, coolness in the heat, the heat of thirst and longing and the heat of uh, temptations, temptations of the flesh. That's often associated with heat, passions, heats of the flesh, whether it be anger, envy, gluttony, lust, Pride, revenge, cool the spirit in me, Lord, with your grace. And also, solace in tears, consolation in tears. The Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Holy Ghost, consoles us in our tears. And this is why God often gives many crosses that puts us to our knees, our tragedies, that brings tears to our eyes. When you suffer many things or lose a loved one or some sickness or whatever, tears of this life, our consolation is not in the local bar. Our consolation is not hours and hours and hours playing video games. That's empty. And many people seek in the world consolation where, where God gives the crosses and tears to purposely draw us to him with his sacred heart to his Immaculate Mother. And too many in the world seek the consolation in what is wrong and empty and vain. And so their souls are never filled and they're always empty and they go from sin to sin, despair to despair. And if the devil gets his way, then he pushes them to suicide, if he can. And that's why in this month, this, this month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus has been profaned and, and uh, blasphemed by all the mayors and even the president should be speaking out against this, this rainbow flag garbage <coughs> which insults God. And what does this call down on the United States of America and all the nations that raise this flag defying God and his laws? What does that draw down on our beautiful country? Fire and brimstone. Fire and brimstone. And we've got a historical record. You could travel there and go see it yourself, Sodom and Gomorrah. That's a lesson to the human race. And it's coming to the United States near you unless we repent of these sins publicly as a nation. And then all the blood of the children who have been aborted. Unbelievable. Over a billion now worldwide. <coughs> We're going to get hit heavy. Our Lady warned us. Whole nations will be annihilated. The word in Latin is very specially chosen by the Virgin Mary. Ad niculum in Latin means brought to nothing, nothing left but smoke and ashes. 
That's what she's talking about. And it's going to take that to move finally a pope to finally obey the mother of God and do, her, do his duty. Oh, most beautiful light, fill the hearts of your faithful intimately. So the, our God is not superficial. He, he intimately loves us and, and wants to be with us all the time. When lovers are in love, they always want to talk to each other. They always think of each other. Duh. They can't go a day without talking to each other on their phones. But God is much more a lover than this. He wants to live in us always and share in our sorrows, our joys, our hopes, everything. Even in our repentance when we sin. Without you, without you, there is nothing in man, nothing but poison. This is true. Nothing but poison in man without his grace. Wash away what is filthy in us. Give us purity of heart. And riga quodest aridum. Irrigate what is dry in us. Wetten. Bring moisture to what is dry in us. And many souls go through dry periods in prayer where you pray and just... It seems like you're just chewing on sawdust. But don't give up. God wants you to pass through this. He wants souls to pass through periods of dryness. And in fact, that proves the greatest love. It does. What proves the love of a mother is she wants to sleep, she's had a long day, or a father, the baby's crying, has a fever, she'd rather sleep, but she has to get up and take care of this baby. That's love. It's, she doesn't feel like it, but that's just love. That's the way it is with love. So we keep going even in dry times, but we need the help of God's grace. And uh, water what is dry, sana quotis saucium, heal what is wounded in us. Remember when we sin, and by original sin, we're all wounded. And when we commit personal sins, we're wounded more. And mortal sins mean they kill the soul. So if you break your leg, that's like a venial sin. If you die of a heart attack on the table, that's like a mortal sin. And when they recover you, if, you, if God gives that soul a chance to come back and live again, how, how many months does it take to cure a broken leg? At least three to six weeks, right? A few months. So if that's what it takes to cure, to cure the body from a broken arm, what, what, a venial sin does much more harm to the soul, and a mortal sin much, much more harm. So only God's grace can heal these wounds, and it does. When you receive communion, when you go to confession, it heals the wounds of sin. And trust in the power of that grace. Bend, flecte quotas rigidum. Bend what is rigid in us. The rigidity of pride. The stiff-necked people that God speaks of, the Jews. Stiff-necked. They are not humble. They don't bow their necks to God and his laws. They're stiff-necked. So bend in us, O Lord, O Holy Ghost, what is rigid by pride. Humble our pride. Fove quodes frigidum. Melt what is ice in us. Holy Ghost is the burning fire. It burns the ice-cold lack of love in us. And we want to ask the fire of the Sacred Heart of Jesus for communion, melt my icy heart so that I love you with the real love of the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary. Rege quotas debium, straighten out in me what is crooked. The crookedness of sin and the inclination towards sin. Straighten it out in me. Help me straighten out so I Keep the path of virtue, which is hard work. It's hard work. Dog to East the we give to your faithful, those who trust in you, the seven gifts. And give the merit of virtue and give eternal joy. And this can be all applied to the Sacred Heart of our Lord and the Holy Ghost. This is the sequence of the Mass. And today, after the Mass, officially ends Paschal time. We go back to the Angelus, 
and uh, the regular masses without so many hallelujahs. So let's turn to the heart of Jesus and the heart of Mary. Beg them to burn in us the great love of God, the great hatred of all that offends him, and to really be strong in the faith in these uh, crazy times, and not to compromise on matters of the faith, never to, to um, fall for the lies that many are falling for now, which is the Mass, the Mass, the Mass. You can have your Latin Mass. Mass is recognized. Society is recognized. But it's not, you can't have that without the faith, the true faith being clear, the true doctrine. So we profess Christ as God, as King, as the only Savior, and all the Catholic truths against this age of apostasy. The only remedy for our United States and all the modern world and the church and the whole social order, the whole political order, the whole economic order, the whole social life, family life, the woman, the man, the children, to stop abortion, to stop euthanasia, to stop the divorce laws and, and eugenics laws of, of, and um, playing with uh, cells of human beings in the scientific labs. These are all offensive to God. Um, organ transplant, plant, transplantation of a vital organs, killing people to get their organs. The only way that all this is going to stop, and it's steamrolling, things are getting worse and worse and worse. It's accelerating because the times are worse. And the children growing up now, the children that survive abortions and contraception, they're growing up as St. Paul describes. Most children of the world, selfish, defiant, rebellious, self-centered, seekers of pleasure, disobedient, unlawful. All this description of St. Paul, that's our modern world. The only remedy is Christ the King, the Holy Catholic faith and tradition, and the real grace of the real Mass. Fight on, dear little faithful here in St. Mary's, fight on, because you carry the torch that will be the fire to reignite this world, which our, our Lord wants to his immaculate heart of his mother. O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.